Hi there, thank you for watching the News Bunker. I'm Andy Waits. It is Friday, February 6, 2009. As of January, 598,000 more Americans have joined the ranks of the unemployed. The unemployment rate has ratcheted up to 7.6%, an increase of 0.4% and the highest since 1974. 11.6 million Americans are on an extended weekend, including me. I'm accepting job offers. Future wars will be fought between robots, according to military expert Peter Singer. He was addressing an annual gathering of top minds in tech, entertainment, and design called the TED Conference. Singer said, In technology, there's no such thing as a permanent advantage. You have Russia, China, Pakistan, and Iran working on military robots. Ah, but we have John Connor. A new interview with Sarah Palin in Esquire magazine reveals very little, but you can bet liberal blogs will have fun with this. Palin said, Everything I've ever needed to know, I learned through sports. Well, that's sure to boomerang back on her in 2012. Also, her daughter Bristol got her name from the home of ESPN, Bristol, Connecticut. Earlier in her career, Palin's goal was to work for ESPN, and she admits she's addicted to Carmex. It's a valuable endorsement from someone who lives through those harsh Alaskan winters. A South Korean woman has failed her written test for a driver's license for the 771st time. She tried almost every day since April 2005. The test has cost her about $3,000 so far. She's hoping number 772 will be the one that puts her behind the wheel. Now I'll look at newspapers from around the world and across America. First, the New York Times. Hey, here's Senator Dick Durbin says, symbolically ripping a page from the stimulus package. You know, symbolism over substance for a photo op. Nice work there, Senator. And here's an interesting statistic. 82% of the layoffs have been men. Women may soon outnumber men in the workforce. We're becoming a nation of Mr. Moms. Now the LA Times, where, look at this, rain makes the front page. Down the page a bit, there's the mother of the octuplets with NBC's Ann Curry. She's a single mother with 14 kids, now under 8 years old. Anyone else expect mental issues here? If not now, then in the near future. Well, let's look at the Holy Land, the Jerusalem Post. Elections coming Tuesday. Here's a pie chart of the parties. I think most parties should serve cake, not pie. The Israeli Navy intercepts a Lebanese ship with supplies for Gaza. Oh, look at this. The UN will look into reports that Hamas used children as human shields. Then they're going to look into whether rocks float. The fairness doctrine that made talk radio milk toast for so long may be on its way back in. That's the law that forces radio and TV stations to present opposing points of view on issues. Several senators are floating the idea, and Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi also endorses it. President Obama, who publicly attacked Rush Limbaugh during his first week in office, is on board. But the Fairness Doctrine has such a bad reputation, it's being painted with other terms now. You'll hear about localism, or diversity, or network neutrality. And now, who could possibly be against those things? Question is, how fair is the Fairness Doctrine? Think how it would devastate NPR. PBS, MSNBC, CBS, NBC, ABC. We would need a whole new alphabet. Maybe Cyrillic. Now some comments on your comments. Grad Stud 28 writes, Your news is dated and your humor sucks. Al Franken won the recount in Minnesota, beating former Senator Coleman. Wow. Well, let's take these one at a time. Your news is dated. Well, that's true. If you're turning to what I offer as your only source of news, you're going to have gaping holes in your knowledge. Oh, well, you know, I'm not doing breaking news. It's more of a commentary on news of the day, and day in this case being an indeterminate period of time. As for my humor, I see you're from Germany, world-renowned for their sense of jocularity. But who have you ever entertained? Just asking. Now for the facts. On Friday, Al Franken asked for the Minnesota Supreme Court to give him a certificate so he could go to the Senate. He holds a 225-vote lead over Senator Norm Coleman in a highly suspicious and contested circumstance. So Franken is asking to be seated just so the seat doesn't get empty. Even the Supreme Court of Minnesota is unlikely to go along with that. Oh, I see. Maybe you are something of an expert on funny business. And finally, the Pearl of Wisdom. Ronald Reagan was born on this date in 1911. The 40th President of the United States was also the 33rd Governor of California and the President of the Screen Actors Guild. He was 51 when he switched from the Democratic to the Republican Party. 
Reaganomics brought us out of the Jimmy Carter malaise of the 1970s. He had several nicknames, Great Communicator, The Gipper, several others bestowed on him by liberals, I, I can't repeat. Ronald Reagan said, Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We don't pass it onto our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. Well, that's it from the News Bunker. There's more news on Monday. I don't do this for pay. I do it for your comments. So thanks for those even if you're a snooty German with an American political fixation. If you click the yellow subscribe button, you'll get an entire weekend full of free space and time. Check back in Monday through Friday for more reports from the News Bunker. I'm Andy Waits. Hey, thanks for watching.